Hello and welcome. We're going to be going over all questions from the Algebra 1 EOC reporting category number 4, 2017 version today. Reporting category number 4 deals with quadratic functions and equations. That's the big bulk of the questions from this category. So quadratic functions and equations. The first thing I'm going to do is go over some calculator tips for reporting category number four. Now, you really need to make sure that you can graph quadratic functions on your calculator and calculate some key features. So, I can plug in a quadratic function. Remember, anytime I see f of x equals or y equals, I can always plug it into y equals on my calculator. Now, when I graph a quadratic function, what does it look like on your graph? It's going to be a parabola that opens up or it's going to be a parabola that opens down. And I need to make sure that I know all of my vocab for quadratics. Okay, there's your vertex, your axis of symmetry, your x-intercepts, roots, solutions, zeros, minimum, maximum. All of those things, those vocabulary terms, really can trip students up. So you need to know, you need to make sure you know what you're asked to find. So when I'm finding a, let's say to calculate the vertex, okay? So the first thing you need to make sure that you can determine is if the parabola opens up, that vertex, that lowest point is a minimum. If it opens down, that vertex right there is the highest point, it's a maximum, okay? When you're asked to calculate something on your calculator, it doesn't say vertex. You have to tell your calculator if it's a minimum or a maximum. So when you determine if it's a minimum or a maximum, I'm going to go to second calc. Okay, so after I plug it into y equals, this right here, okay, if I'm in y equals, I generally stay up top, up here. So I'm going to go to second calc or second trace, and I'm going to go down to minimum or maximum. And then I'm going to press this left arrow key and right arrow key to move the cursor, okay? And it's going to ask me for a left bound and a right bound and a guess, okay? So what's a bound? It's a boundary. Okay, so let's kind of look at this. If I have a parabola that opens up like this, I'm going to go and I'm looking to find that vertex. I'm going to go to second calc and I'm going to scroll down to minimum. And then I can move my cursor, left and right arrow keys, and I'm going to set my boundaries. Okay, so these little dots over here that I've got, if this is my dot where my cursor is, over here is a left boundary, over here is a right boundary. Same thing with this dot. Over here is a left boundary, over here is a right boundary. Okay, so you're setting your boundaries for your point. So here's what I like to say to do. You've probably already done this, but move your cursor to where it's on your vertex. Then press the left arrow and then enter. Then go right back to your vertex. Then press the right arrow, enter. Go left back to your vertex. That means you've set your boundaries your left boundary to the left of that point, your right boundary to the right of that point, and then it's gonna say, guess? Sure, you're now where your guess is. So press enter again, okay? And then it'll tell you your vertex. It'll tell you your ordered pair, your X and Y values, okay? So then the next thing, calculate the X intercept. So at this point, I'm looking for the zeros, and that's what it is on your calculator. Okay, so you've got your parabola, your quadratic. Here's your x-axis. Here's where it crosses your x-axis, okay? You wanna look for the x-intercept. So you go to second, calc, scroll down to zeros. And then again, you move your cursors using the, or your cursor using the left and right buttons. So let's say I wanna find this vertex. I'm gonna put it on that that point, okay? I'm sorry, that solution right there. I think I said vertex. But so put it on that point, okay? 
You want to set a left bound, a right bound, and a guess, just like you do for your vertex. So what are we going to do? We're going to press the left arrow button and then enter. That'll be our left boundary, but then you need to make sure you go right back to your guess. So now we've set our left boundary and we're back at our guess. Now right boundary, right arrow button, enter, and then go back to your guess. That set your right boundary. Now these lines don't show up on your calculator on your TI-84, but now you're back to where your guess is for this particular quadratic. So press enter again, and it'll tell you your solution, your x-intercept, which is when y is zero, so your y value should be zero. Okay, let's get started on these questions. So I'm just gonna give you some test-taking strategies, okay? We're not gonna be doing all of this algebraically. We're gonna be looking at some test-taking strategies. So 2017 version, the graph of f of x equals x squared, that's our parent quadratic function, was transformed to create the graph of g of x equals x minus 7.5 squared, which, the, which of these describes this transformation? Now, I know what happens if this is in my parentheses, okay? It's a horizontal translation. It's gonna move it. I know it's gonna move it to the right 7.5 units. But if you don't know that, well, I can plug in that into y equals, and I can plug that into y2. And whatever's in y1, it'll graph first. Whatever's in y2, your calculator will graph second. And you'll be able to see that this is a horizontal shift to the right 7.5 units. Moving on. Total number of seats in an auditorium is modeled by f of x equals 2x squared minus 6x, where x represents the number of rows of seats. How many rows are in the auditorium if it has a total of 416 seats. Okay, so if, you are, if you're ever given a word problem like this and it tells you what x represents, you need to write that down. x equals number, I'm sorry, number of rows of seats. That's what x represents. Okay, so then what does y equal? y equals the number of seats. Your question is asking, how many rows are there? Okay, how many rows are there? What is x? What is x in the auditorium if it has a total of 416 seats? What is x when y is 416? What is x when y is 416? So, your test taking strategy, if you're ever given a y equals in your problem or f of x equals, plug it into y equals, okay? Then you could look at your table of values, okay? Go, what is x when, or I'm sorry, what is x when y is 416? It's, six, it's 16, okay? You can also go through your answers and plug in these values for x, okay? and see if it gives you 416 for y. No, I plug in that one, nope. Plug in that one for x, nope. Ding, ding, ding. When I plug in 16 for x right here and right here, I get 416 for y. We are rocking and rolling. Number 10, the graph of a quadratic function is shown on the grid. Which function is best represented by your graph? Okay. Maybe I could eliminate some answer choices. Um, my parabola opens down, right? Okay, so what does that tell me? The A value is gonna be negative, just like G and just like J. I know it's not F or H. Okay, if you can't eliminate answer choices, that's okay, but what do you need to do? You need to go through your answer choices. Okay, go through your answer choices. But please note that sometimes the graphs are very similar, so you may need to look at the table of values and confirm points on the graph. So I'm gonna make sure that when I plug in G, which is the correct answer, that one zero is a point on my graph and negative four zero is also a point on my graph and zero four is also a point on my graph. So just sometimes um, answer choices can look really, really similar. Let's move on to number 14. 
The graph of a quadratic function f is shown on the grid. What is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is when x is 0. So the y-intercept, oh, this is super easy. There's my y-axis. There's my y-intercept. What is it? It's 0, 4. So my y-intercept is 4. So this is a free response question. So here's my gridable. Positive, negative. I don't need to write positive, but I can just write a 4 right there. Okay, if you want, you can write a positive there. Number 24. The graph of f of x equals x squared is transformed to create the graph of h of x equals 2 times f of x. Which graph best represents f and h? Okay, so now if f of x, here's what I like to do. If f of x equals x squared, then anywhere I see f of x, I can replace it with x squared. I see f of x right here. So h of x is going to be 2 times x squared. So now that I have my two graphs, could I graph this into y1 and this into y2 and then see the difference? Sure. Observe that the graph is going to be narrower when I put this two in front. Okay, that is a vertical stretch and your answer is j. Okay, here's f, it's the dotted parabola, and then h is much narrower. Okay, that was a vertical stretch. Let's move on. Number 30, what is the domain of f of x equals 9 minus x squared? Whenever you see the word domain, what do I want you to write above it? x values. What are the x values? Well, you can always graph it, but the x values of every quadratic function are going to be all real numbers. Your domain for every quadratic function, unless it's a specific situation and it asks for a situational domain, which is different, your domain is going to be all real numbers. Let's move on. What is the positive solution to the equation? Zero equals one third x squared minus three. Okay, you can always solve algebraically for x. Add three, multiply by three, and then take the square root of it and get positive or negative three. You can absolutely do that. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you that because I really like this method. When I do not have a bx term, I can add three. I get this one third x squared all by itself, then how do I get rid of that fraction? I multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal of one third is three. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by three and I get nine equals x squared. Okay, now how do I undo that exponent of a two? I take the square root of both sides. Well, when I'm solving an equation and I take the square root of both sides, I end up with positive or negative three. What is the positive solution to this? It's positive three. Okay, so here's my grid. And then there's my positive, there's my negative. It's looking for the positive solution, so I know it's gonna be positive, and it's positive three. Now, you can always graph it on your calculator. Anytime you see this, plug it into y equals, then do your second trace, scroll down to zero, go to the positive x-intercept, okay? And then enter your left and right bounds and enter your guess. You can absolutely do that. Moving on, number 39, a word problem here. A projectile is launched into the air from the ground. The table shows the height of the projectile, h of t, at different times. Based on the table, which function can best be used to model this situation? When it's can best, be used, it may not be perfect. Okay, it may not always be perfect, and that's okay. Okay, so your strategy here is just to go through your answer choices and then look at your table to see which equation matches the table the best. Okay, go through your answer choices, and when you plug in this one and you look at your table, it best represents um, this table of values. Moving on, number 43. Which quadratic function in vertex form can be represented by the graph that has a vertex at 3, negative 7 and passes through the point 1, 
negative 10. Okay, so your strategy in this case, again, is to go through your answer choices and look at the graph and the table. We're looking for a vertex that's a highest or lowest point, and then this needs to be in our table of values. So you're going to go through your answer choices, and then you end up getting to D. And when you plug it in, you notice that here is my parabola, and this vertex up here, when you calculate it on your calculator, is 3, negative 7. Ding, 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 that satisfies one requirement. Then second graph, I look at my table of values and I notice one negative 10 is also a point on this graph. That is my answer, okay? You also might see, you might remember that this is in vertex form. So that minus three moves it right three units. That minus seven here moves it down seven units, which means my vertex is at three negative seven, okay? So if you know that, if you remember that, you can obviously eliminate answer choices. Like I could eliminate everything um, because none of them, all of, none of these have a vertex of three negative seven, okay? So number 46, the graph of a quadratic function is shown on the grid. Which equation best represents the axis of symmetry? Now my axis of symmetry is gonna be the vertical line that splits the parabola in half. One of the things you should know about your vertical line is its x equals. Can you eliminate any answer choices? Sure, f is a horizontal line, h is a horizontal line. So now your axis of symmetry is draw that line right through the center of your quadratic, your parabola. Where does it cross your x-axis? At two? x equals 2, okay? So you can always eliminate answer choices and then go from there. Number 53, last one. Which graph best represents a function with a range, that's y values, of all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 6? My range is y is greater than or equal to negative 6, okay? So right here, my range is y is greater than or equal to zero. Nope. Here we have a range of y is greater than or equal to six, so that looks like, or negative six, so that looks like that's gonna be my answer, but you know what? I'm gonna go through all of them. Here's b. What's the range of b? y is less than or equal to negative six, and then d, y is less than or equal to zero. So it's not b or d, my answer is c. So that concludes your 2017 version of your Algebra 1 EOC reporting category number four. I hope it was helpful.